chips and materials. Today on my desk we have the Nokia 5, which sits comfortably between Nokia's 3 and 6, which were also released this year. If Nokia is not careful, they're going to run out of digits to use on their phones next year. Let's get started. The Nokia phones are pretty inexpensive and extremely popular all over the world, but also really hard to find here in the USA. There are a couple on Amazon that work well with the GSM networks, so I'll link those in the video description. This beautiful copper brown is going to be subject to my rigorous durability test, just like every other phone. And it has been scratched. With Gorilla Glass though covering the surface, there's no surprise when the scratches don't appear until level 6. Tempered glass is the standard for smartphones lately, and Nokia is using the good stuff. The front-facing 8-megapixel f2.0 camera is tucked under the same glass as the screen, so no damage will be happening here. The earpiece is a vinyl-like material, and there's no chance of it falling out. It's glued in pretty tight. The home button is made from glass and is scratch-resistant. My razor blade does nothing. Normal wear and tear will do no damage to this home button. It's not invincible ceramic, like we saw on the OnePlus 5, but it's still pretty good. And now for the back of the phone. This color is actually really awesome. I've never seen anything quite like it. The Nokia branding is lined up with the camera lens in the center of the back, and after a little analysis, I find the branding is solidly inlaid into the back panel, and there won't be any issues with it falling out in the future. The 13 megapixel f2.0 rear camera is up here in the center. It's a step up from the Nokia 3, but the fact that they use glass on this lens is a huge benefit. If you remember from my Nokia 3 video, it used a plastic back along with a plastic camera lens, and that alone is reason enough for me to spend a bit more money and jump up to the Nokia 5. Never having to worry about the lens scratching is a big plus. Even the flash is covered with glass. Over here on the right side of the phone we have metal volume buttons, and a metal power button, along with, you know, some more metal down the sides. On the other side of the phone both the dual SIM and SD card trays are metal. No water resistance is included but for this price, that's kind of expected. The top of the phone right here next to the headphone jack is all plastic, probably for the cell signal, but at the same time the corners of the phone are most likely to hit the ground first during a drop, and the plastic corners are more forgiving and pliable than metal is. Nokia has built their phones with useful features that won't break on the first drop, unlike some other extremely fragile devices released from Apple this year. The color of the phone is super unique, the aluminum body looks and feels pristine. And look, I drew a graph of Bitcoin. Or, you know, if you flip it over on the side, it's Donald Trump's approval ratings. Starting at birth. Down here at the bottom of the phone, we have more strategically placed plastic, along with the micro USB charging port. That is one thing I hope Nokia changes across the board next year. USB should be a thing. The 720p 5.2 inch IPS LCD display does seem a bit dim. It's currently maxed out on brightness at the moment, but the screen did last for 10 seconds under the heat from my flame, which scientifically means that if you hold a lighter to your phone, it, it'll survive for 10 seconds. Seems to happen to me on a regular basis. And now for the bin test. Slightly more useful than the burn test, we get to see the internal structure and build quality of the Nokia phones, applicable to drops, bins, bumps, tight pants, and basically everything else in life. And Nokia, once again, has built a beast. Even when bent from the front and the back, nothing flexes, and nothing is disfigured. No kinks or bends. Nokia has proven that phones don't need to be expensive to be solidly built. I've tested the Nokia's 3, 5, 6, and 8 now, and all of them have passed. It'll be interesting to see what Nokia does next year now that they've run out of numbers to use, but either way, hit that subscribe button and let's find out together. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you around.